So, the last time you were in your car, was the heat on or was the air conditioning on? This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where five days a week you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success. And now, here's the host of 7 Minutes in the Morning and your results coach, Tom Rigsby. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Good morning to Joe and Gail. Thank you both for being here so early and getting your comments in. Listen, if you'd like to join that crowd, get your comments in, get your welcome in on the air, that's easy. Just head over to 7minutesinthemorning.com and uh, drop a comment in there or wave or like any of those things. Uh, I'll see those and give you a big shout out there. And if you happen to be watching or listening somewhere other than Facebook, come on over. 7minutesinthemorning.com gets you the right Facebook page where you can join the conversation. I don't know about you guys, but it's flipping chilly here. Thirty, It says it's 38 degrees outside and 96% humidity. Good grief. Clearly, I haven't moved far enough south. Um, be that as it may... My question to get us started this morning, what, it's, uh, I'm curious what your answer was. The last time you were in your car or your truck, your vehicle, was the heat on or was the air conditioning on? The last time you were in the car, was the heat on or was the air conditioning on? Good morning, Amanda. Glad to see you here this morning also. That is an example of a question. Right. And, uh, I kind of titled, you know, today's, uh, talk, the subliminal side of focus. And I just showed you how to do it. And I'm going to show you two, two things that you can do with it. You might not have even, uh, realized. Yeah, there you go. Neither. Have, do you have the window down or are you just happy? <laughs> happy with the way things were. Gail had the heat on. So when we ask our brains are these magnificent supercomputers. They are designed to answer questions. And when you are asked a question, uh, heat and the heated seats. There you go. Those will be beneficial today. Oh, you don't have any. Okay. Um, when your brain is asked a question, when you are, are posed with a question, your brain cannot not answer the question. It instantly Switches focus to answering the question. Now, you might not verbalize that answer, but your brain is going to go try to find the answer and bring it to the front of your thought. So think about this in terms of advertising. How many times have you seen an ad that asks a question? Right? When was the last time you had a great meal? When was, you know, when did this happen? Have you ever experienced all of those are designed, those questions and those ads are designed to capture your attention from whatever you're doing and get you to pay attention to focus on them for just a second. And we know it, it, uh, for that one particular question, your focus is only going to last seven to eight seconds. But if you can string enough of those together, then you can maintain attention for a whole 30 second commercial. That's not what I want to talk about though. What I want to talk about is how to use questions that use the same theory to your advantage. All right. So instead of, um, in, instead of other people dictating what you think about and what you focus on, use questions to help you define what you think about and what you focus on. So there's a, a Tony Robbins has a great quote where focus goes, energy flows. The things that I think about and the things that I focus on begin to suck in all of my uh, time, energy, and attention, right? And so the que- and then questions dictate outcomes, right? Or let me say it a different way. Our questions dictate the things we focus on, just as in the advertising example. And the things we focus on get our attention and draw in our time, energy, and attention. So questions can create focus. So what we have to be careful of 
are uh, asking ourselves that we, we always want to ask ourselves empowering questions, not disempowering questions. So here's an example. Let's say, uh, for example, that you had a customer call, right? You were calling on a customer uh, or a prospect. Uh, all right, don't let me forget that, Tim. You're calling on a new customer or prospect, and they don't buy your product or service, all right? All right, thanks. Appreciate your time. Hope I can talk to you again in the future. Hang up. Now you can ask yourself a question, and you will always ask yourself one of these questions. It just, it works. It, it, it's just the way our brain works, okay? Man, why didn't he buy anything, right? Or, man, what did I do wrong? Why, why, why didn't she want to buy this? So those are all, those are examples of disempowering questions. Why not? And, um, well, why not? Why not are a good example. I may get to some others in a minute. Why not are good questions because you're saying you're giving up control to the other person. You're saying, why didn't they do what I wanted them to do? The better question to ask is, okay, that was a no. What can I do differently next time to get a yes? That's an example of an empowering question because I have accepted control for that out or responsibility for that outcome and control of the next outcome. Makes sense. If that's making any, uh, any kind of sense at all to you, just let me know. Leave a comment there. Say, yep, got it. Understand. Um, I can come up with some other examples of empowering versus disempowering questions. But the problem, the reason that we want to avoid disempowering questions is because, as I said, they're giving control away to somebody else. Not up to you. Right? When is it ever going to be my turn to win? There's a great disempowering question. Nothing you can do about that. What can I do to win next time? What can I do to get 1% better? Those are all empowering questions. Those are questions that give you um, the, the opportunity to improve yourself to affect the future outcomes. So that's what we're really looking for. Ask better questions. If you want better outcomes, ask better questions. And those questions are going to be asked of yourself. All right, that's it. That's our topic for today. As Tim points out, there's a new installment of the Entrepreneur Code apparently going up right now. Um, I'll, I'll put a link. I'll put a link on uh, on my Facebook page, and I'll be sure and share that around. If you hadn't watched an installment of the Entrepreneur Code yet, they're reasonably funny. I won't say they're hilarious. I think this one... Uh, I think this one is going to be about trash pandas. So you might want to watch this one. Uh, but be on the lookout for that. I'll be sure and leave a link here and in other places for that. And as Joe points out, it is Wednesday. That usually means a coffee shop show. Um, but there's not going to be a coffee shop show today. Sorry. Uh, we are both <laughs> otherwise occupied today. Yeah, how to trash panda your small business. That's the topic of the entrepreneur code. Um, video coming out later. Um, Eric and I are both unavailable for the coffee shop show this morning. Sorry about that. I know, I know, disappointing, but we're going to get that resolved here in short order. Stick in there with us. We'll have another uh, episode coming really soon. All right. Uh, Wednesday, that means co-working night is tonight, 6 o'clock at Huntsville West. Go to CWN, co-working night, cwnflyer.com to see all the workshops that are going on there. And back here again tomorrow, another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Till then, you guys keep warm and have a great thir uh, Wednesday. I almost said Thursday. Ugh.